Are you ready for a great adventure? Today on The World is Yours, we'll see the monumental Niagara Falls that straddles the border between Canada and the United States. We'll go on an exciting helicopter ride over the falls and finish off with some delicious buffalo wings. Then we'll visit Washington, D.C., where we'll get to see the monuments that decorate the National Mall. We'll visit the hallways of the White House and we'll mix with the people in Georgetown. Finally, our journey will bring us to Asia, where we'll visit the Sichuan province of China. There, we'll explore the narrow Jinli pedestrian street, taste some hot pot, and experience cuteness overload at the Giant Panda Breeding and Research Center. So grab your passport and let's get started. and the world is yours. First up on the agenda, let's go chasing waterfalls. Speaking of which, did you know that Niagara Falls is not the name of the waterfall? Are you surprised? This beautiful natural landmark, situated right on the border between Ontario, Canada, and the state of New York, not the city, is actually made up of three different waterfalls. Horseshoe Falls, American Falls, and Bridal Veil Falls. These three falls can be found on the Niagara River, which connects two of the famous Great Lakes, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. And trust me, they're a big landmark. In fact, more than six million cubic feet of water go over the top of the falls every single minute. Just imagine taking a strong shower and multiplying that by six million. That's a lot of water and it's moving fast. But Niagara Falls isn't just impressive and beautiful, it's also useful. That's right. These waterfalls are also a huge source of hydroelectric power, which is used by the many communities and industries in the area. Are you ready to get a little wet? Then let's go. The best place to view the falls is at Queen Victoria Park on the Canadian side of the falls. Entrance to the park is free and it's open year round. We can hop on a boat to see what the falls look like from below. Let's take a quick cruise. Get your poncho on, because we are about to get soaked. You'll notice not only is Niagara Falls massive and powerful, it's also loud. So cover your ears, open your eyes, and feel the spray on your face. By the way, if you ever come back and want to see the falls by night, you'll be in for quite a treat, because at night, the waterfalls are lit up in a rainbow of vibrant colors. Want to see something even more spectacular? Sign up for the Falls Fireworks Cruise and watch the sky explode with color. This colorful demonstration of technology is designed to amaze. You can enjoy the spectacle no matter the season. There are about 81 presentations daily. It doesn't matter what side of the border you're on because there are excellent views from either the Canadian or American side. The observation deck called Prospect Point Observation Tower Located on the defile known as Niagara Gorge, gives the visitor a perfect view of the three falls at Niagara. Visitors can go to the base of the cliff and then climb some stairs up to the crow's nest, where the view includes air conditioning and Niagara Falls mist at no extra cost. Time to board the helicopter. You heard me right. It's time to experience Niagara Falls from yet another angle, this time from above. A pair of tickets from Rainbow Air has been booked so I hope you're excited. On this tour, we'll be able to get really close to the fall. We'll get all the adrenaline without any of the danger. All the pilots are extremely experienced, and from the helicopter, we'll be able to see the whole area from above. We'll fly over Rainbow Bridge, Goat Island, the Three Falls, and Skylon Tower, and over the Rainbow Bridge that connects Canada and the United States over the Niagara River. The Rainbow Bridge platform is 202 feet above the water and is 950 feet long. Did you know that almost 2 billion pounds of water pass under the bridge every minute? It's incredible, don't you think? Our trip is about to end. And what a better way to end the day than with Skylon Tower. Skylon Tower is one of Niagara Falls' biggest attractions combines two activities, viewing the area from the observation tower and having a meal at the restaurant. 
Niagara Falls is the perfect trip for the whole family. And after this incredible aerial tour, our appetite has come alive. Let's see what delicacies await us. Have you ever wondered why we call them buffalo chicken wings? I mean, buffaloes definitely don't have wings. No, in reality, this tasty, meaty snack isn't named after an animal at all. We call them buffalo chicken wings because they're from right here, Buffalo, New York. The city of Buffalo, New York is only 20 miles away from the American side of Niagara Falls. Buffalo chicken wings are famous all over the United States. But let's stay here just a bit longer and try this tasty treat at the top of the falls restaurant. It's the only restaurant that directly overlooks the falls. So we're in for a one of a kind experience. All right, now that we're done eating, we better keep it moving on to our next adventure. But first, let's test your world knowledge. Many of the US presidents living in the White House have had pets, including exotic animals. Which of these animals has never lived in the White House? A, a hippo. B, a zebra. C, a bear. D, a hyena. The answer coming up when we return to The World is Yours. Earlier, I asked you this question. Which of these animals has never lived in the White House? A, a hippo. B, a zebra. C, a bear. D, a hyena. Let's find out the answer. If you said B, zebra, you're right. A zebra has never lived in the White House. But other animals like bears, hyenas, and even a little pygmy hippo have. Washington, D.C. is the capital city of the United States, located on the east coast of the country along the Potomac River. It's the only city in the continental USA that's not located in a state. Instead, it's between two different states, Maryland and Virginia. The D.C. stands for District of Columbia. As you might have guessed, there's a whole lot of history in Washington, D.C. It was named after the first president of the United States, George Washington and it was officially declared the capital city of the U.S. in 1790. Washington, D.C. is home to all three branches of the United States government, and it is full of monuments, museums, and landmarks related to American history. Most of these can be found lining the National Mall, which is actually a very long park, and not a shopping mall at all. Why don't we check it out? The National Mall is one of the most recognizable areas of Washington, D.C., but surprisingly, many people don't know its name. It's a beautiful open area with gardens, fountains, trees, and monuments stretching for two miles between the Lincoln Memorial and Capitol Hill, where the White House is. This area is so important in the history of the United States that some people call it America's Front Yard. Let's check out this memorial to former President Franklin D. Roosevelt, or FDR for short. He was the 32nd American president, and he served for 12 years. Nowadays, presidents can only serve for eight years at a time. FDR was an important figure in American history because he was in office during the Great Depression, when poverty was sweeping the country, and also during World War II. If you go inside his memorial, you'll notice that it's divided into four outdoor sections, where you can see some impressive murals representing different historical periods during FDR's presidency. And when you finish admiring the art, check out the view. The FDR Memorial is the perfect place to look out at Tidal Basin, a partially man-made reservoir flowing from the Potomac River. The basin is beautiful to look at, especially thanks to the bright pink cherry blossom trees that bloom here every spring. These gorgeous trees were a gift from the mayor of Tokyo in 1912. Not all memorials on the National Mall are dedicated to presidents, though. There are plenty of other important Americans recognized there as well. Let's stop and have a look at the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. MLK was a famous African-American pastor and activist who inspired and motivated people during the American Civil Rights era in the 1950s and 60s. At this time, there was a lot of segregation between races and African-Americans were not treated equally. MLK led many marches 
and inspired the masses with his moving speeches, such as the famous, I have a dream speech. That speech was actually originally given right here in DC during the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom in 1963. Dr. King was an important figure in the civil rights movement and his work resonates to this day. No visit to Washington DC is complete without a tour of the White House. The White House is home to the President of the United States and has been the residence of every president since John Adams first moved into the unfinished building in 1800. Throughout these 218 years, the White House has been the subject of various renovations to adapt it to the changing times. Washington DC is the perfect place for walking tours. Just a few blocks away from the Smithsonian Institution, between the United States Capitol and the White House on the same Pennsylvania Avenue is the Newseum. Originally, this museum, dedicated to information and free press, was in Arlington, Virginia. However, in 2000, a search for a new location was initiated that would allow for a building with the latest and greatest in technology. The museum opened its doors here on April 11, 2008, and since then, it has received the highest recommendations and praise, both nationally and internationally, for its excellent work to promote freedom of speech in the world. There is no better example of this than the front wall of the museum, which features the words of the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, guaranteeing freedom of speech to all citizens. Now that we've seen a couple monuments, I'd like to take you somewhere equally historic, but also super trendy. Let's head towards Georgetown. Going from the National Mall to Georgetown doesn't take more than a half hour. Washington DC has an excellent public transportation system that includes buses, underground subway system, or metro. Look around and take in the local charm. This place is full of beautiful boutiques, restaurants, and of course, historical monuments. Georgetown is in a historical neighborhood that was founded in 1751, making it almost 50 years older than the District of Columbia. Nowadays, it is a port city that overflows with energy. There's so much to do here in Georgetown, like renting a kayak and paddle on the Potomac, or have a snack with friends enjoying delicious cupcakes. You can also appreciate the architecture here, and will be surprised to see that it is similar to the old British cabins, which is logical since the majority of the first immigrants to the United States came from England to this new world, as they called it, it's very cool to visit these well-known historic places, and getting a little exercise isn't a bad idea either. But now, we have an appetite. Where would you like to eat? We know a place where we can go where we'll find something for everyone. Let's go to the Union Market and look for food trucks there. There's nothing better than a kitchen on wheels. That's what we always say. There is everything in this place. Do you want something sweet? There are ice cream stalls, donut shops, and much, much more. Do you want something out of the ordinary? Ethiopian, barbecue, fish, or empanadas? You're not hungry? There's a great place to have tea. This tour has been incredible, but how about changing completely? We'll cross the United States, hop over the Pacific Ocean, and head over to China. But first, let's test your world knowledge. What do giant pandas symbolize according to the Chinese? A, wealth. B, family. C, conflict. Or D, peace. The answer coming up when we return to The World is Yours. We're back. Let's find out the answer to our question. What do giant pandas symbolize according to the Chinese? A, wealth. B, family. C, conflict. Or D, peace. If you guess D, peace, you're right. Back in the day when warring tribes wanted to make peace with each other, they would raise a flag with a picture of a panda on it in order to stop the battle or to call a truce. Welcome to China. China is the fourth largest country in the world, so of course we don't have time to see it all today. Instead, we'll be making one stop and exploring the Sichuan province. Sichuan province is the fifth largest of China's 23 provinces and the third most populated. 
It is located in the upper Yangtze River Valley in the southwestern part of the country. And there's something there for everybody. From huge cities like the capital, Chengdu, to vast forests and tall mountains, to ancient ruins from the Sangxingdui civilization. Not to mention giant pandas. But we'll get to that later. Let's begin our Sichuan adventure by visiting the world's largest stone Buddha. This ancient sculpture is located near the city of Lushan, in the southern part of the province, close to where the Min River and the Dadu River meet. The Lushan Giant Buddha, known as Lushan Dafo in traditional Chinese, is 233 feet tall. It was carved out of the side of a cliff there between the years 713 and 803, during a time referred to as the Tang Dynasty in China. This impressive stone statue was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1996, which means that the United Nations has agreed to give it a special status as a place that is significant to the culture and heritage of the world. A Chinese monk named Haitong was the one who began the construction of this enormous Buddha. But it wasn't just about creating something pretty. The original purpose of the Buddha was to calm the wild rivers, which were difficult to navigate for traveling ships. Seeing that Buddha statue made me feel nice and relaxed. I think I'm ready to head back to a city. How about you? Let's hop on over to Chengdu, the capital of the Sichuan province. Maybe you've never heard of it, but it's actually one of the most important centers of finance, commerce, culture, transportation, and communications in all of Western China. And it has one of the 30 busiest airports in the world. So why wait? Let's head straight for the busiest area, Jinli Pedestrian Street. This narrow street is lined with traditional Chinese buildings and vendors selling all sorts of delicious street food and snacks. At night, the area is illuminated with hundreds of traditional red Chinese lanterns, giving the whole neighborhood a warm and romantic glow. I think it's time for a meal, don't you? We've done a lot today, after all. I know just what we should try some Sichuan spicy hot pot. As you might have guessed, this tasty hot meal comes from right here in the Sichuan province, and it's called spicy for a reason, too. If you're sensitive to strong flavors, you might want to sit this one out. But then again, isn't traveling all about having new experiences? So, are you ready to face the fire? Sichuan spicy hot pot is a soup. It's also not a soup. What am I talking about? Well. You see that big boiling pot of broth in the middle of the table? You're supposed to dip your ingredients into it and cook them that way. From thin slices of different types of meat to mushrooms and bok choy, a leafy green Asian vegetable to tasty noodles, anything can be dipped into that hot, spicy broth. Wow, that was delicious. And I think my tongue might still be on fire. But let's move on to the grand finale of our trip in Sichuan Province, China, the Giant Panda Center. But first, let's test your world knowledge. How many different species of panda exist? A, one. B, five. C, 11. Or D, 17. The answer coming up when we return to The World Is Yours. Welcome back. Let's find out the answer to our question. How many different species of panda exist? A, one. B, five. C, 11. Or D, 17. If you guessed A, one, you're right. The only species of panda goes by the scientific name of Aliropoda melanoluca, which literally means black and white cat foot. Let's move from the center of Chengdu, about 6.2 miles to be exact, to the Chengdu research base of giant panda breeding, also known as Chengdu Panda Base. Wild pandas only live in small areas of land in the southwest of China. In other words, where we are now. The rest of the world's pandas live in various research centers and zoos throughout the world. Did you know that a panda needs 2.5 to 5 square miles of land in order to survive? And a breeding couple of pandas need 11 square miles? 
it's no wonder they need so much room. Adult giant pandas can weigh between 200 and 300 pounds. You wouldn't know it by looking at these rambunctious little guys. The Chengdu panda base was first established in 1987. Back then, they only had six pandas, which they had rescued from the wild. But by 2008, there had been 124 panda births, and 83 of those pandas had survived. The base itself is considered to be a world-class research facility where guests can learn all about pandas and panda conservation. It's an important job because, unfortunately, these beautiful creatures are very close to going extinct. In fact, there are just over 1,000 of them left in the whole world. Scientists are doing their best to increase the population, and they hope to increase the number of pandas to 5,000 by the year 2025. We could stay here all day watching these adorable black and white fluff balls tumble around. But alas, our time is up. What an amazing adventure we've had today. We started out admiring the awesomely powerful Niagara Falls, then got a crash course in US history in Washington, DC. And finally, we got to explore the natural wonders of Sichuan Province, China. There are many more adventures ahead. Until next time, the world is waiting, and the world is yours.